I'm Niecy Nash, and I just finished my interview with Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. All right, y'all gonna wanna tune in, huh? We laughed, we prayed, we cried. It was good. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee, and this is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. Hey, and it's your girl, Tori Hart, back in the building. Your boy, Giovanni. Hold on. And we have somebody I've never <laughs> met. Somebody I've never met, but I actually really, really love, Niecy Nash. They could tell by that laugh, huh? Because I sound like I need to drink a glass of lotion. <laughs> <laughs> they That's know hilarious. it was me. <laughs> no, I, you know, I first came to know who you were, of course, from uh, Reno 911. Yes. So I thought you were just crazy. I just yes. thought you were crazy and funny. And, and then now look at you now. You got a star right around the corner from my house. How about look at, look at God? <laughs> look at him right in the face. <laughs> huh? Stare at him. Didn't he do it? He did it all day. Hmm. We try hmm. we try to find the first on this show. You're the first mega celebrity we've had that has a star on the Walk of Hollywood. Oh, oh yay! Go. And apparently, you know this one at the end over here. Yes. That's only my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> That's only my neighbor That's who my neighbor. I never see where we live. Well, that's because, Nisi, you got it going on. I mean, you know, you have a lot of stuff that is happening right um, now. Hello, Pot. It's me, Kettle. I, I'm <laughs> just saying. What are you talking about right now? I don't even know. Listen, she got so much stuff going on. I don't know if she's in Louisiana. I don't know if you're back in L.A. I mean, you got claws. You're doing other things now. So I really honestly don't know. And I'm the type. I don't like bugging people. So you're not the neighbor so, that pops up and knocks on the door to ask to borrow shit. I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Well, I ain't got nothing that. for her to borrow. See, because, <laughs> yeah, I ain't got no groceries. I ain't got nothing. I, really I got some wigs in there, girl. It's like, okay, girl. I need some but, wigs. But other than that, no, I don't have nothing for her to hop up and borrow. Well, you know I'm rocking the wigs now, Nisi. So, look, I'm going to need your help with that. Call me, girl. Yeah. Come over. <laughs> Wait, so how long have you all known each other? Wow. A thousand years. It's been a while. And I mean, you look I, good for a thousand years old. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been watching you. Okay, so I, I, I've known Karuchi for a long time. And I remember when she got on Claws and she was like, oh, I got the show and everybody was talking about Claws. And then I started hearing everybody talk about it. I don't really watch a lot of TV because outside of the news, because Trump got the world so fucked up, I got to pay attention to his ass. But I was sitting at home one day and Claws came on and I watched it. And now I'm, I can't stop watching the damn show. And that little Russian chick that just showed up, she's fucking everything up. Well, Slata, yeah, she's a piece. Okay, so so from Reno 911 to here, what has been the journey? Because I know we've sat on this show, and when we talked, the first time you I interviewed you here, mm -hmm. we talked about Kevin's journey becoming the superstar. And, you know, we all want to give up along the way. Mm -hmm. You had talked about recently on The Breakfast Club about your journey. So we're in from Reno 911 to now. Did you Did you always know it was coming? Did you ever want to quit? Well, when I was a little girl, I feel like, you know, God stamped on the canvas of my imagination, my destiny. Mm. From the moment that I laid hold to it, I felt like I only had one job, which was to make it manifest. Mm -hmm. So I always purpose to not get weary in the well-doing because, you know, if your plan A is to make it work, and then your plan B got to be to make the plan A work. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, getting off the ride, n I never saw that. I've never reached a point in it where I was like, oh, you know what? I just can't, you know, back of my head to my forehead. No, I, I've, I've not had, you know, every day a bed of roses, but even in the hard parts, I never want to get off the ride. Really? Mm. No, So never. when you say hard parts, what are some of the hard parts like? Because, you know, a lot of... People coming out in Hollywood, they face being homeless. They face being broke. What were some of those hard parts that you're speaking of? Well, my hard parts, I probably would say in the beginning, look like being able to even go out and audition. Forget getting a job. Mm -hmm. Just to even get into the room when mm -hmm. I had three children. So who's watching them? Mm -hmm. How you going to not go get a job to go out here and do, you know, and in and, 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 and reality of it all, when I started in entertainment, there wasn't reality shows. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, so people always thought that entertainment is you mm -hmm. just playing around. You just looking pretty. You're going to get a real job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they never saw that right. as a real job. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, but now I got three little faces looking back at me like, you know, we hungry. We want fruit snacks and happy meals and this and that. And how you going to make all that? But were you a trained actress or you just or you had the personality and the like because you have such a big personality? 
My I have training. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I'm a double dip. No, but I mean, I when, you, when you went to go, you a double you, D. When you, when you did, ah, well, that too. Listen, uh, but, we, uh, listen, you're not gonna. Don't start today with Miss Nash. <laughs> Double D. Okay. Sorry. So, so when you were, so when you went to McDonald's and had that one day at McDonald's, were you a trained? You, were you, a tra- you, you knew I worked for one day. Listen, can I just say something? <laughs> yes. So I'm, you know, I don't do a lot of research on a lot of people, but people that I don't know personally, except for Boone Gang, who pulled a gun on me here in the interview, but that was a separate thing. Oh. I tried to learn something about. I'm gonna need him to knock it off for that. But continue. so we were playing. I was playing some of your interviews and listening. So my friend is sitting there. My friend flew in to, to uh, order some clothes for me. So he's ordering clothes and we're playing you in the background. And he's grown up in the church, and he's like, she's anointed. I'm like, shut up and order the clothes, because <laughs> he was listening to your story. Mm. So my question is, I heard you said- Good mother has a little anointment <laughs> on her. So I heard you had, you had worked at McDonald's for a day, and I'm thinking, okay, well, were you, you were an actress then, struggling actress, I'm assuming. Well, no, you know what? Because that was when I was, you know, like a teenager. Okay. And so my, my mother didn't really lean in it took a long time for her to lean in and be like, oh, this is your gift okay. and this is what you're going but to do But did you know then life. that that's what you wanted to do? I've known since I was five what I wanted to do. Jennifer Lewis was here, said the same. Mm. That was exactly the age when she knew what she wanted wow. to do. I knew at five. That's and, crazy. And, and it has never changed. The vision has expanded. Mm-hmm. But but the primary a goal has, has never changed. Yeah. I never got off the ride. So the little jobs that I had along the way, and I think I maybe had maybe three Jobs. McDonald's and I worked at McDonald's for mm-hmm. one day, and I got fired I'll, I'll tell because you what know, I, sh- oh, go ahead. I was I was a I was kind of ratchet. Um, <laughs> you don't say. I was. <laughs> well, you ain't had no business working for McDonald's, Nisi. You too fab for that. Well, but no, but then I was young. I mean, you know, and I needed a job, but you know, and. I don't know. Even you know, that young, you, I just can't wait, see wait. you working at McDonald's. But why did you only last one day? Because she's too I fat. Was ratchet. <laughs> because a girl got smart with me in a drive-thru. <laughs> and once she did that, I was like, Bitch. bring her around here to this first window. <laughs> <laughs> and but by the time she swizzed that car around, the whole top half of me was out the window and in her face, telling her to what, 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 cussing her out. And I was like, get out the court. Get out the court. <laughs> I got like, you big, Matt. It was very that. <laughs> I was the court. It was very that. <laughs> and um, I, when I put my head back in that window, my manager had his arms folded. I just took my little paper hat off and gave it all back. I was like, I already know. This is like what about to fire you. He was. He was. I just, I didn't have, I wasn't good at customer service back then. Wait, and you're from Compton. So, yes. I, it, oh, it, it, shit. you know, there, there, and again, I, there's a lot of talent that's come out of Compton. A lot. A lot. You went down the list. You know, again, the Breakfast Club, we don't say those two words on this show. Now I love Charlemagne. But that interview was really good. You talked about a lot of the time because I've never, I mean, I know the game and we know. We know people from Compton, but there's a long list of people that come out of Compton with real talent. Listen, I'm I'm, I'm 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 straight out of Compton for real, <laughs> uh, by way of St. Louis, because I lived there for a long time when I was a little girl, which was so interesting when I met Cedric mm-hmm. because I played his wife for five years on the Soul so, Man, mm-hmm. but because he was, I used to be married to a pastor. <laughs> Oh God! And um, that was my first husband. <laughs> and um, so you were first lady. Duo. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. Did you do like the big hat first lady? First lady, like, well, like did you come listen, with the hats? Listen, and- <laughs> listen. Because that was in the first. You know, you know, I'm extra. She got the first lady and I, hands. And I, and I love the regalia. Huh? Yeah. Come on, somebody. I can see you in there with a, with the big hat. And Truly a- giving honor to God, and who I is the. Like- yeah, of course. You know, I did the whole thing at first. Right. I was very. Tradition, uh-huh. oh god, so to speak, just in the look of it all, uh-huh. and then I immediately got over that, <laughs> Go home. and I just, you know, rested in my truth. But I will mm-hmm. tell you, the challenge with that is that church people can be very um, judgmental, oh, my god. and they feel like they own you once you are their pastor mm-hmm. or their first lady. Mm-hmm. So, being an actor, you take some roles. And after I've talked about it with my husband and, you know, prayed about it, like, oh, yeah, I like this. What do you think? And we agreed. You still have some people who are in ministry that will have a fit. Oh, we've mm-hmm. had we've had Megan Good here, and she struggled initially when she got with uh, Devon Franklin, mm-hmm. you know, when, people, when she had wore the dress on the BT Awards and, like, 
the church just went crazy because she wasn't supposed to look like that. I'm like, well, damn, you look good. Yeah. And you're an actress. You're, I mean, you're not just the pastor's wife. You're an independent woman. But the, but the gotcha gotcha is a lot of times women will say he got called and I didn't. But that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Because you're in it to co-labor. So yeah. whatever it looks like, you have to you have to be an individual. But the greater good of the call of of what you all as a couple has to go forth, too. You know what I mean? So you you do have to take it into consideration. So is that you don't have to change, your, you know, everything. But you do have to consider what you're giving. So is that something that broke you and your ex-husband up? Like you just couldn't take that pressure no more, you feel like? No, that's not what broke us up. We, you know. Um, <laughs> she had this is some pastor that. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the good old pastor Don't stuff. Don't make me get up and run out of here. <laughs> no. no. Um, you know what? I got married when I was really, really young. And um, I think I married my husband when I was 20, 21. That's oh, that's young. Yeah. I was like a baby. Yeah. Wait, when you I, married a pastor at 20, 21? He wasn't no pastor. See, he tricked me. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about that for a yeah, second? No, I was, yeah. Listen, I was hoodwinked and bamboozled <laughs> because I thought he was going to do real estate. And then I also knew that he really had a beautiful voice and he wanted to sing. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's lovely. You'll sing. I'll, I'll act. act. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll be on the red know carpet know I mean? together. We'll, we'll do some things like that. But cut to... He came in there one day and was like, <laughs> I, I I got called. And and I'm this, you know, picking up the baby and doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. I said, who called? And he just waited to say it. I was like, the gas company? Yo mama? <laughs> like, who called? Like, I don't know who called. And he's like, no, I got the call lean. I said, ooh, what you going to do? He said, what I'm going to do, what, what we going to do. do. And I said, well, you got and he was like, no, we're, you know, we're in this thing. So I wasn't ready. And it's a lot of responsibility. And it's a lot. You know what I mean? Um, it's just a lot. Yeah. So, so Melissa, who's not here, she used to date Flo Rida. And she said one day they, she was in the house in Miami. And he came in and dropped on his knees and started to pray and told her, we can no longer have sex anymore because the Lord, we're living in sin. Then started to pray for her. Say so he was going to pray for her, and she had to usher into his life. So that if in, in that was a part of like the end of that relationship because she felt like that call and her phone was disconnected. So she <laughs> she didn't understand how that call came through. Listen, it ain't. It, listen, it is not. You can't be no punk and do that. You, you can't for sure. Now you your can. three babies you got are they by the pastor? Or all of them. All of them. By <laughs> Don't you are not about to ask Miss Nash if she got three baby daddies. I was definitely, it's, 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 it's an honest question. I want to know if they were, okay, so how's that co-parenting now that y'all not together no more? Well, um, <laughs> no, you know what I, what, 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 what I will tell you that we try to do, this is the good thing about the men who I marry is that they don't, <laughs> eat, neither one of them mind co-laboring. Like so we all go, you know, my children are, my, the last one graduated, but when they were in school, it was like, hey, we had a, a group text called the trifecta. <laughs> Just the three of us was on it. <laughs> I'm like, parent teacher conference, six o'clock. I'll meet y'all by the PE field. You know, because I'm who's coming. The, who's the three people in the text? The ex, the next, and me. Really? <laughs> You're all in a group text? Yeah. I love it. The trifecta. So we, we show up. We walk around to the thing. We the only ones up there. We're like, she got two daddies? What is going on? Wait, you know, wait. So care. so are you Kevin and Aniko in a text group? We are not in a trifecta text group. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that because you're the spearhead. So I'm learning right now. I got the spearhead this trifecta. Well, see, because in my situation, see, what my kids tried to do was mm -hmm. divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but let me tell you what we would do. We would have secret meetings. They didn't even know we was getting together, honey. We'd mm. be down there at the Starbucks just all in a huddle. Well, what they tell you, that's yeah. what they told me. And then when we figure out what they what they up to, we would all do the same thing. I would go lean in, and we would all send them a, a group photo of us together. And then they would just be like, dang. Were you, were you, were you, the, were you the one I'm taking the that. lead on that, though, pulling everybody together to make sure? Well, I was the common denominator. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? At first. And you know it's uncomfortable at first because mm -hmm. my ex-husband thought he was going to tell my new husband about me. I was like, try it if you want to. <laughs> huh? You know what I mean? Because you know one person will, there is always somebody in this world that mm -hmm. will tell somebody else that you ain't Shit. Yeah. Yeah. that part. Yeah. 
they will tell you that you ain't it. But then there is somebody else who your name is so sweet in their mouth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't know what you're trying to tell them, brother, but I already got the ring, so fall back. Yeah. You know what I mean? We hit it now. Mm. You know what I mean? So once we got over that, like you can't tell him nothing new. You know what I mean? Because I'm not who I was when I was married to you. Right. And so now we we all, for the sake of the children, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll, we, we co-labor. Mm. Now, how old were the kids when they were trying this whole divide and conquer thing? Um, I would probably say it started from the beginning of me dating my new husband. And so my son was maybe, um, he was maybe around 17 or 18 when he okay. came around. And then the other girl was a little behind three years younger than him. And then the baby is three years younger than her, four years younger than her. So okay. they were, you know, a little stair-steppy, but you know, we just pushed through and it was a little rocky at first, mm -hmm. but we leaned in. And now that all the kids are out of school, we don't talk as much now because we don't have to, Yeah, you know, not, not by choice. It's just by circumstance, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were a customer service agent. Now we're doing what? I used to, um, Play on the phones for United Airlines. Play on the phone. <laughs> because you know what? I work graveyard and I hated it. I was sleepy. <laughs> and so I would just be like, United Airlines, this is Carolyn speaking out. Can I help you? I don't know. Just random, random dumb voices. stuff yeah. I would do on the phone. And I would get in trouble all the time. Because you know, when you on hold, they tell you these calls may be monitored. And I knew I would... Over here. And I... Damn. I pack up my Just little stuff and go over there and get in trouble again. And I always got in trouble for playing on the phone at United. Well, so look, that didn't last. That's God long. telling you no. It you is. are meant for other things. <laughs> God is telling you no. Wait, so when you but so when you wanted to be an actress, were you formally trained? Because you know, after I did the reality thing and did the the uh, wild and out stuff and kind of got out there and tasted it a little bit, I'm like, okay. I did a video that went viral where I said, Lee Daniels, nigga, listen, you need a blogger on one of these shows. Cause some power, I mean, not power, who was that? Empire. Uh, Empire. I, even took 50 to, I even took 50 to dinner. You know, I wanted to ask him about that, but he wanted to talk about everything else. But anyway, um, did you were you trained early or did that just evolve over time when you really, really got into it? Um, even from a little girl, I always took acting class and, you know, did plays and, you know, wrote. Uh, you know, original pieces to perform mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Then I went to college. Um, I actually auditioned and got into um, NYU. But when my um, we had some family tragedies um, that happened. And when I was 15, my mom was shot. And after that, she lived, thank God. But I never wanted to leave her. I had real bad mm -hmm. uh, 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 anxiety. anxiety about leaving my mother. So I thought I got accepted to NYU. We all going. Mm -hmm. And my mother was like, girl, I ain't going nowhere. So I was like, oh. And your, mo your mom got shot after your brother died? Uh, before. Before. Yeah, my mother got shot when I was 15. My brother got shot the day before my 23rd birthday. Wow. wow. Yeah, so we, we, and that's the one thing about being in entertainment is that, um, Reality shows definitely let you know it's not a charm life mm -hmm. because they let you see all of the, you know, bullet holes and stab wounds and, you know, the emotional things that people go through and, and they're very exposed. But when you look at like Hollywood and movie stars and that sort of a thing, people seem to think that you live a charmed life. Yeah. Like you don't go through nothing because you live in a certain place or you got this amount of money or you know, you sleeping with this person next to you every night, mm -hmm. that your life is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's just not. See, that's it's the weird part. Not. So yesterday on the show, we had talked about this past weekend, <clears throat> I took Cardi B over to Kris Jenner's house. The Car P Kardashians, we posted the video. Mm -hmm. we, we were in the closet playing around with masks. I mean, it was Kanye, different people playing with masks. People, the hate, the hate mail that we got on Hollywood Unlocked, the hate that I got on the DM, the hate that we got on all the Instagrams, they hate the people for sure in their real life, but they're so sucked into their lives. And then on the flip side, somebody like you who's private and, you know, very successful in television, film or whatever, they hold you to a different standard. I don't understand the reality in people's head of how they look at, you know, either a movie star or a reality star because everybody's just people. Whether you see it or not, I mean, we well, all... What were they so upset for? They just hate the Kardashians. 
They just hate them. Well, they somebody hate them. don't. I know. Because they are balling. <laughs> because, because they would not be in the position that they were if that was the case with the masses. Right. I don't know. I don't get it. I just, I've never been the guy, the person to go to another person's Instagram page that I don't know and tell them what I think about them. I just have never been that. But see, that's because, th- th- let me tell you what about social media. It really makes you brave. But, and it gives you a platform. Because you remember before this happened, if you wanted to find something out, where you had to go? To the hair salon. Yeah. yeah. You, that's where everybody was going to talk about it. And you was going to find out what you was going to say your two cent in those walls. And that's how rumors and things, girl, well, I heard. Mm-hmm. But now it is so instant. This yeah. microwave generation that we live in, everything is right now. People feel like, because I can. And if the right person... If the right person has the right clap back at the right time, then that person for a moment it, becomes yeah. a star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's it just in social media because it's still a platform. Mm-hmm. I'm good, love, and joy. Ah! <laughs> and they're trying. They like people try. Now, if you notice, you know, they try to get over under the shade room. They go into Hollywood unlock comment section, like, okay, today I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna get my fame. So that like that's their mission now. Well, and that's different from uh, famous is different when you if, if that is what you're seeking. Yeah, because you could be known for anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You could be known for anything. Having a fight, snatching somebody wig off. Yeah, charred uh, it down the block that'll give you a mean head job. Well, then there's that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's so many things. You know, I plan when I plan this interview with Miss Nash. I said we're going to have uh, a superstar with her own star she, on Hollywood. Because I've been, because I've been, you know, I've been talking to. Um, Samuel Jackson about coming on the show. I would dread we get real stars in here, Gio. You talking about the things that you talk about? Anyway, so Karuchi's a friend. Shut your ass. Yeah. Karuchi's a friend. I knew her way before Chris and um, whatever. Yeah. You're. Are you a good mentor to her, just as a individual? Because like I'm listening to you and just the wisdom that you're spitting off, and I know she's such a good girl coming from being a very normal person, living a normal lifestyle, to in in the, all of that, and then now having come out of that on the other side, you know, just, yeah. you know, creating her own pathway and people try to diminish the work that she's done. I'm just like, damn, you're doing that one because she's a woman. And number two, you're doing that because you wanted her to fail and she didn't. Are you a mentor to her? Um, I You would have to ask her that. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say that when it comes to claws, you know, being a leading lady implies that you're someone people want to follow. Mm-hmm. Right, right, you right. You know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. So I try to impart wisdom life advice we talk about boys we talk about career we talk about um, longevity do you talk about longevity we talk about acting and the and this in this business and you know i was asked before because this is a role that i actually refer karuchi to Mm -hmm. why did you think to pick this girl Mm -hmm. and i said the part of i always try to find something in my real life that intersects a character that i play And the thing that I thought was so interesting was that because of her circumstances and experiences, people had developed whatever their ideal of of her of her and what she was supposed to be and or do next. Right. Um, And and I just felt like she just like the character Virginia, she just needs the right place to belong. Mm hmm. Once you find your tribe and once you find your community and your skill set and the call on your life, Mm -hmm. everything changes. Everything changes. You know what I mean? And I I just there was just something that said that connective tissue between who she is and who this character is. is perfect. That character wasn't used to being around people who loved her. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that was Karuchi's story because I I don't know that Mm -hmm. part about her. Um. But I knew that she had been through something, just like Virginia had been through something Mm -hmm. and needed to be somewhere where she could be affirmed and established and get off to the races Mm -hmm. for herself. And I just thought that could be so interesting. Please read this girl. Did you all know each other before that? I knew her, but very briefly. I'd only met her through Wendy Raquel Robinson. Mm, that's the homie. Because uh, my daughter wanted to model the little one. Mm-hmm. And she, and people were saying that she was too short. And she was like, well, what about Karuchi? Yeah. She's not even tall. And, and, you know, she used her as an example. So 
we gave her a big sweet 16 birthday party and I was trying to get Karuchi to come to the party and surprise her, but it didn't work out. But she did call her or send her a video. I don't know what they did, FaceTimed or whatever. Mm -hmm. So then we knew each other through kind of that. Mm. And then just like it happens, it was maybe, I don't know if this was before that she talked to my baby or after, but I ran into her when we was both dressed up for that. What's the big Halloween party that they have every Maxim. year? Maxim. We went to that Halloween party and I saw that baby looking over there. She was a playboy bunny, but I was like, mm -mm, honey, let me go talk to this bunny. Come here. We was right in the middle of that party. And I was like, come here, park it right here. Park it. Park it. <laughs> and I was like, look, you know what I mean? And I gave her that good old mm -hmm. auntie slash mama advice. And I was like, and you call me, mm -hmm. huh? I ain't going to tell you what I told her because that's for her to tell you. Mm -hmm. But I was like, come here. You know what I mean? So in the middle of all the people jumping around and doing jello shots or whatever they was doing, <laughs> I was like, come here real quick. And uh, we just, we were cool ever since. And then full circle, you thought of her and yep. brought her in. That's, that's amazing. So are you EPing on Claws as well? Not yet. Oh, yeah, but, you, <laughs> but you have some type of juice to get her a job. I got a lot of people jobs on that show. Um, she didn't get to star in Hollywood because she knew she got juice in the city. You well, know I, but, but my thing is that I never get a job and not get somebody else a job. Mm. I don't believe that, in that. that. That was a remarkable thing you said on one of the interviews. That because yeah, I think on the last show we were talking about, or if it wasn't here with K. Michelle, we were. I was talking to somebody about how. Gabrielle Union had reviewed, had revealed that she was a mean girl and didn't want other black women to get jobs. She had did the whole thing at the Essence Women's Brunch and then sat mm -hmm. down with Oprah and a few people. But like, what? Why is it different for you? And then we're gonna get into this uh, Beyonce thing because I'm a I'm a, a proud member of the Beehive and I know you was in that video. But anyway, I digress. Oh, yeah. when, I don't just think of women. I just think of people. When I started in this business, I didn't know anybody, mm -hmm. and I didn't have anybody to help me or guide me or tell me nothing or nothing and i just you know and i remember when i didn't get this one job i had auditioned to be um one of the original cast members of girlfriends mm. oh and it came down between me and golden brooks and i never forget i walked in there and i had on some leopard pants and a black shirt and some boots <laughs> and she had on this tight dress and we were very different you know mm. I, mine was meaty cheesy and greasy and hers was all you know <laughs> And we just did two very different reads. And um, and when I didn't get that job, I was devastated mm -hmm. because I really wanted it. Mm -hmm. And I remember just praying. And what I feel like was revealed to me is that you didn't get that job because you selfish. Mm -hmm. And I was just, listen. I was like, I will help my mama do anything, Lord. <laughs> my mama. And, right. And that's exactly selfish. what he said back. Mm -hmm. your, the world is bigger than your mama. Mm -hmm. And I purposed in that moment to not stand in my own way by not being a person that could be used when I got somewhere. So mm -hmm. the job is the job. But when I go there, Lord, what is my assignment? Mm -hmm. Because that's two totally different things. I'll tell you about my friend. She said, he said you were anointed. anointed. That's what he you said sure today. You still not married to the pastor? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. He regrets it. Um, <laughs> but no, so, and then be, and as, as I continue to just grow as a person, I feel like, the opportunity that I could give somebody else, it doesn't cost me nothing. And mm -hmm. it's easy. So if I go there, I met my friend um, at um, United, I mean, at uh, Delta, going back and forth to do claws. And he was walking me up to the gate. And I'm like, what do you do? He's like, music. And I'm like, what you got? He was prepared. I was like, send it to my phone right now. He dropped it right at my phone. I put it up to my ear. And I'm like, whatever this is, is fire. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. <laughs> I can't promise you nothing, right. but I can promise you that I will put you in front of the people who could do it. So I sent them his music. And what happened? In this first episode of the first season, I mean, of this season two, the first scene of me making love to Dr. Raval or doesn't make a love to Dr. Raval is his music. Wow. And I was like, I mean, that didn't cost me nothing. But mm -hmm. if you ask me to come over your house and cook you a three course meal, <laughs> we're going to be struggling <laughs> because that's not my 
that's not my gift. Right. But to be a conduit to help other people, like I'm already sitting in the seat. Mm -hmm. I'm already number one on the call sheet. Why would Ooh, I just sit there with my hands on. behind my head like, well, I got a job. Like right. I'm like, no, pumpkin, what you do? Yeah. Oh, and what you do? And what you do? Well, so I've got several people work on cloths in different departments doing different things, right. you know. Well, that's the beautiful thing that's about awesome. it. The first yeah. time I met you. Where'd you meet me? It was about seven years ago. I don't know if you was coming. I think uh, it was a gymnastics. LA Gymnastics. I think your kids or somebody was in gymnastics. Or well, you was next my door. My little one. Yeah, they was, my ex-fiance used to work there, Leticia, right? So I came out to you and I was like, Miss Nash, I'm sorry to bother you. Can I talk to you? And you talked to me outside your bins and gave me your number. And we stayed in contact for about a few months, but we lost contact. But you would give me advice. This is before my acting career started off. But you was giving me jewels through text. Never had met me before. But I met you outside of gymnastics school because your baby was there. Wow. That's When I tell you what, <clears throat> try to tell my mind and not my heart. Every time I had a baby, I lost a little bit more of my memory. I can't remember <laughs> nothing. I don't even know how I learned my lines because I literally <laughs> cannot remember anything. I had another girl come up to me. She was she was working background on Soul Man, mm -hmm. and she kept looking at me and just staring at me all day. And I said, "Oh my God, this girl is crazy." Cut to the day is over. Cut to cut to mm -hmm. the day is over, and I hear her saying, "Excuse me, excuse me." I said, "Oh Lord, what you just lady want?" But she came up to me and and they started to explain that many years ago. I mean, almost like a thousand years ago, at the mm -hmm. beginning of my career, she was working background on a TV show that I had a small part on. I'm coming back to my trailer and she's standing outside on the phone crying. I stopped dead in my tracks. What happened? What's the matter, Punky? What you crying for? Come in my trailer. Mm -hmm. Come to find out her grandmama was like on her deathbed and she wanted to get there. And, you know, she didn't have the money to get the ticket. And I said, well, how much is the ticket? So wherever she was getting to, mm -hmm. I don't know. So it was a couple hundred dollars for her to get there. And I was like, okay, well, I'll buy you a ticket. Like, okay, but just stop crying and go see your grandmother. I have forgot this girl. Yeah. Didn't remember this girl from a can of paint. And she said, I knew that one day I was going to be able to thank you to your face. She said, I didn't know when, where, or how. And for the first five minutes of her telling me the story, I was like, oh, Jesus, bring it back. Who was this baby? What happened? What did I say? Because I, I didn't, it, it wasn't clicking. Yeah. And then she said something, and I was like, right. That, yes. <laughs> like, I, you know, but... So that that paying it forward thing, mm -hmm. That's why I you're just so blessed now. I just want I, I I, you know what I was it was just hard being in it and not having anyone who yeah. you could even ask for advice, a text, a phone call, a, just nothing. Mm -hmm. And and so, not that you can help everybody because that also becomes exhausting in the pouring out. And and how do you, and let me ask you this, because I've helped a lot of people. I mean, not able to help them on your level, but even with placing them with jobs with my ex. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people have pretty much turned their backs on me mm -hmm. after I have put them in positions to prosper. Mm -hmm. So how do you handle that? Has that, has that ever happened to you with you helping as many people as, as that you've helped? Well, I feel like I've experienced that maybe... Mm, I, I've experienced it a few times, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't give to get. Mm -hmm. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I just, I just give because. Yeah. And if you don't do the right thing and there is no reciprocity in a relationship, I'm, I'm fine to tap out and I see it and I get it. And I know that it's still going to come back to me, mm -hmm. that my service and my my thing that I try to put out in the world, because the universe has no choice but to respond to yeah. what you give it. So with that being said, because a lot of times you want it back from the person you gave it from. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I if you if, if if I take money from you and I say, oh, I'm going to pay you back and I never pay you back. But you see me doing stuff and while it. And you tell her about it. And she's like, what? I'll give it to you just so you don't have to be mad no more. The chances of you still looking at me side eye are high. Mm -hmm. be because you don't understand that the universe just gave it back to or, you. Or, or and even a, higher because it didn't come from you. But it still came to you. It came but it to didn't you. Come it from, didn't come from where you wanted it to yeah. come. So you still side eye. Yeah, yeah. I just try not to live in that space because mm -hmm. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And I try to just be like, well, where is it going to come from, Lord? How, yeah. Who's going to... Where is the reciprocity going to be in this exchange? Because right now, this person is really cutting up. 
You know what I mean? And it's always revelatory. It's like, oh, they were always a user. Mm. Oh, okay. Check. Mm. Oh, you were, oh, that's really your DNA is that. Yeah. So yeah. now that you don't need whatever else I got to give no more, you're you moving a little bit different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, you, and, I, and I've and, seen it. It makes you feel a way, but then you just... You have to let it go. But I've okay. also I've also learned too that God, that God could be giving you the blessing by revealing to you that that person is that type of person. You know because givers, I used to be a giver. Now mm-hmm. I just don't give. Why? Because I I give well like we've interviewed a homeless guy here and the Uber driver who was driving me and explaining to me how he was helping him. We just got the homeless guy in the house. We just we're getting this guy a modeling job. I got him an agent. I'm helping him. Because I was moved to help him. But mm-hmm. I used to be the guy, like, you could call and say, hey, I need to talk to Chris Brown about this. Okay, cool, let me call Chris. Oh, I need to get in front of Latifah for this project. Oh, yeah, let me call Latifah. Now I'm like, nah, I'm focused on Hollywood Unlocked. And unless I'm moved to do something, I don't take those phone calls no more. Mm-hmm. Because I learned, I was burned so much, I used to just be destructive when I got burned because I felt betrayed. I came yeah. to the city from Stockton, California. You're from Compton. You're not of the, you in L.A. or from L.A., but you're not of that Mm-mm. L.A. thing, you Mm-mm. know? I came out here thinking I was friends with everybody. I'm like, wow, you got on, you got on, you got on. And uh, I just, I used to be really destructive when I felt betrayed. But now I realize disassociation is more powerful than me having to go there. So I'm just going to stay focused on what I do and in my little world and my contribution to my foundation or whatever. That's my giving back. But mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. But you you definitely a much bigger person than me. Well, I just don't want people <laughs> to change me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I want to change because I feel like... Maybe it is necessary for me to elevate in this area. Or maybe Mm -hmm. I want to grow a little bit more doing that. But I don't want somebody out on the street Mm -hmm. to make me move in a different way. Mm -hmm. Mm. And and now I'm I don't even recognize myself. Mm. Because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna show you. No, I'm not. I'm about to lay up under this Jamaican, honey, and live my best (laughs) life. That's all I'm gonna do. Yes, that's all I'm gonna do. Okay, so you get the phone call from Beyonce or Ava DuVernay or somebody to be in part of this majestic This is what happens when the family fuse. What happened? Yeah. No, because you know, I was at Equinox one day and I saw the one guy, I don't know his name, but he's he's a pretty big actor too. From Moonlight. You talking about? From Moonlight. Yeah. He goes to Equinox. Uh, and Is that his name? I don't know his name. But the lead he, he, the lead. he was the lead in Moonlight, yeah. I don't know his name, though. But he was Mahersala in... Mahersala Ali? Not Mahersala. Oh, one. maybe you're talking about Travante, the one that played the, the older, older boy. Yeah, yeah, Travante. He, he was in this... Yes. It's a movie. I'm going to call it a movie that you were in. <laughs> and he was uh, killed, right? He was killed in there. In the by fr- Michael B. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, I wanted to ask him, but I didn't asked him because he was in the bathroom and that would have been weird <laughs> but how did you get the phone call to be a part of that was it the Compton connection with Ava was it just how did it I mean Beyonce there, there's, you? There, there's certain people who when they call you <laughs> you just pick up the phone and say yes you don't even get to say hello you just yeah. go yes I'm available because you yes whatever it is do you mm-hmm. want to go eat do you want to be in a movie <laughs> yes whatever it is yes <laughs> Ryan Murphy is one of those people. Ava DuVernay is one of those people for me. Mm-hmm. That if I pick up the phone going, yes, <laughs> just because I don't even know what it is, but just yes. Oh, my God. So, so, she, so she called you. Ava and- was like, yeah, Ava just reached out. It was like, hey, um, I need you to do a secret project for me. I said, where you, where, today? When is it? What you want me to do? And she, she said just, it's a secret. And she was like, no, she had to tell me like the, where to go. But she didn't tell tell me right away like mm-hmm. what it is. And I was just like, yeah, no, what? OK, yeah. So when you were shooting it, did you know what you were shooting? By the time all of that happened, <laughs> yes. OK. And it was an amazing experience. Just all of those actresses sitting around the that table. That was a powerful ass table. Yeah. It really I would love was. to have last supper at that table. So, when you, so when you walk in, because there's the process of everybody taking their seat, are you looking around the room saying, this shit about to be, this is some big shit? Before we even get to the table, you know, we are in the trailers. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to tell you which one of them I saw, but I walked in on one, and, you know, because wardrobe and this and that mm-hmm. and the third. And they were like, oh, we could take you in another room. I ain't going to tell you which girl. But one of them was like, oh, no, I'm good. And dropped that thing down. And I was like, girl, I would have took all my clothes off, too. Because this is right. Yeah. All of this is right. I, think I, know. I ain't going to tell which one. But I was like, this is right right here. Um, but so we had a little bit of fellowship before we actually got to that part. So okay. some people we saw in the makeup trailer or hey, girl, hey, or, 
you about to so then by the time we got over there and we was all hoisted and you know greased and up everything was lifted up and we was sitting at that table we just looked around like this is dope yeah yeah this is so dope right now like I love my life today. Yeah, I love my life. That's, <laughs> wow. Did you know you didn't know the overall concept that it was going to play out like a movie? Uh no, I didn't know everything. But you know, we knew that. Um, you know that. Uh, um, the actress was at the head of the table. Was supposed to be Blue Ivy, and you know, so there were some things that mm -hmm. we did mm -hmm. know. Um, but we didn't know everything. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't know a lot about the scenes that you were not in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Did you get a chance to at least see Beyonce? <laughs> no. Not when I filmed that part. <laughs> Have I ever seen well, I know Beyonce? You've seen her. Yes. I know I've seen her too. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was at dinner last night with Ty Hunter and asked, like, I was wondering, like, who has her phone number? Nobody. Like, Somebody got to have it. Something like Solange. Uh, Ty had phone. it. <laughs> Ty has it. Yeah, but I can't ask him for it. Yo, I want to work with Ava DuVernay so bad. That's huge. I'm I'm actually leaving at the end of the month to do her new project. Um, is this today is only the second day of it, but I leave at the end of the month to do Central Park Five oh, about wow. the wow. five yeah. boys that got uh, convicted for raping the Central Park jogger, but they were innocent. Mm -hmm. So she's making a four or five part series. Get my agent on that today. Thank you. <laughs> Come on in New York and see what it do. You never know. Nisi might call you. She does think it's your day. All right, so so the star in Hollywood, they give yes. you a call and they say, We're gonna we're gonna put you right here next to uh was it not Tinder Greens, but it's No, uh, I'm Greenleaf. right by the C V S. You're by Greenleaf. <laughs> Yeah, you right there. I'm right there by the CVS, honey. Don't play. Come get your cold Go cream, ahead. your condoms, and visit my star. You know, you should call Donald Trump because you're actually really good at protecting your star. You saw me out there? I post, we posted on Hollywood Unlocked. You Maybe know. I was standing over it like it was an egg that I had just hatched. <laughs> Move it around, people. But no, so when you get the call to, to get a star, I mean, what did that feel like? Did that feel like validation or had you already received that? I received it when I said it out loud when I was nine. Mm -hmm. But you know, you you're 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 from the time that God shows you something and the time that it manifests is called the meantime. I didn't know how long the meantime was gonna be. Mm -hmm. wow. Wait, hold on, There's a lot of meantime and on a lot of meantime <laughs> listening to this interview right well, now. I, I, yeah, so in in my meantime, I didn't know how long it was going to be, but I knew I would it was going to manifest so you in my life. You knew you lifetime. were gonna have a star. I said it. I, when my daddy took me out there, we had just come out here. I was maybe eight or nine. And I see we're looking all around and I'm looking and I don't recognize a lot of the names because I'm young. But I know that Michael this is Jackson. what you get when you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you do your, do your thug, it's all right. <laughs> and I, I see an actor and I'm like, daddy, that man is on TV. And he said, baby, that's Ed Asner. He was like on Mary Tyler Moore show. Yeah, and yeah. Lou Grant is his character. And I ran over there and I'm like, sir, I know you an actor and I'm going to be an actress too. And my name is going to be right here on this ground. And he's like, yeah, kids, Graham. And, I, oh, wow. and he started walking away and I was like, remember my name. And I was doing a talk show and I said that. And then I got a letter from him. Mm hmm and he said, thank you for not letting a crotchety old man discourage your dreams. Mm. And of course I know your name. And mm. I was like, what? And he drew a little star. So I invited him to come to my star ceremony. First, they said he was coming. Then they said he had a work conflict and couldn't come. Then at the night, two days before, they said he's coming. So I couldn't look at him <laughs> until after I got through because I was just like, talk about a full wow. circle moment. Like, I, I was so, and the best thing I did for my, let me tell you something. I know social media is everything in this day and age to a lot of people. But the best thing I did for myself on that day was to give my phone to my sister. I gave my phone to Kelly, and I was like, I want to be present. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to be taking the thing and on the thing and let me go live. By and the way, you took a good ass picture. And I, mean, I, I, wish I, I, I heard about the whole there. dress thing getting there, but you took a bomb ass photo. Thank you. And I, But I was, I was in the day. Yeah. I was in it. I didn't even post to the following day. Mm -hmm. I, and, and it took me almost two days because I gave my phone to somebody. So when I got it back, I was like, oh, she was there. Oh, that was cute. <laughs> and I got to relive my party in another way because mm -hmm. I was just in the moment. Present. Right. What you, you know, and I was able to touch everybody and 
feel and, 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 feel and enjoy it, it yeah right and not be so married to did i get the picture and who, find a filter girl yeah and what is the what like That's i just what this was generation like no. needs to learn a lot more today i was just be in the moment it's funny because you know what what I, I see people doing? You will be at a thing, at an event or whatever. Tori is right here in front of my face. And instead of me really just listening to her speech, I'm doing I'm watching her on my phone. <laughs> and I'm like, why do why do people do that? Like, why? We we went to dinner with Floyd in Canada and when we got to the restaurant, there's about six of us around this table and he asked the people for a bowl. He he put it in the, he said, Everybody put your you phones in there. To. Yeah. So we did it. But I will tell you. We were all fucking frantic during dinner because we all felt like we were about. missing something. Even know what to talk about. And then, no, we, we knew what to talk about. <laughs> the conversation was great, but we were literally looking at each other like, you want to go and get the phones out the bowl? Because we were all trying to get our phone. Really? Be in the moment. And just like I said a couple weeks ago, I went hiking on Runyon and I, I looking at the bushes. I ain't looking at bushes. <laughs> I was looking you ain't at, stopped to smell the roses in that mall. I was looking at the dirt. There was a dog walking by. <laughs> That's a dog. Like, really, because I'm... So, you know, Hollywood Unlocked, we're married to that Instagram and that website yeah, and news, and yeah. it's just, it is consuming. You do have to take a break from it. You got to at least have a day where you just, where you where you experience things in real time. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I actually with, took a five-day break. Like, I just posted something today, and I, I told myself, like, I'm taking everything in that you say right now. Like, I'm, I'm getting chills that I'm receiving everything that you're saying. I'm like, telling you is, what. When we, when, we, when we had Jennifer Lewis here giving gems, like yeah. you can feel when people are going to get something from mm-hmm. this. They're going to get something from this. Uh-huh. And I'm going to DM you when I need a job. I just something well, to think. Well, the one thing, if, <laughs> if there is a takeaway, it would be to find your purpose mm-hmm. and chase that. Yep. You know, because a lot of times, you, you know, <laughs> the trick, the, the, the downfall of social media is mm-hmm. that it can make you aspire for someone's oh, yes. life that's not real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was just like the baby that I just posted. And I was like, um, if you ain't got a friend to do this, where he tried to jump out the car and do the Kiki challenge, and he really didn't have a car, and his friend was just holding up a oh, car door. My boy Adam. Yeah. So, but <laughs> yeah. my point in that is that you you don't know the parts that's real and not. And yeah. you could aspire to want to be something that people are not, it's not even Real. Real, it's yeah. something manufactured in the lab. That's why I only follow eight people. Because I, I know a girl follow everybody on I, my personal account. Because I was so consumed with where's Karen Civil at today? Why is she at Louis Vuitton? Why wasn't I at Louis Vuitton? Yeah. Who was at AOD <laughs> last night? Why I didn't get the invite? I don't, I don't even and care. And goals no and aspiring to reach certain goals that people put out there. Goals this, goals that, and it's like no, those aren't really goals because no, you but, don't know what they're no, really but doing. The thing of it is, is what's your what's your goal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wake up and don't look at somebody else's page and be like, ooh, that's goals. Look in the mirror and be like, goals, honey. This yes. one is giving. This is goals. <laughs> you, can't, you can't covet another person's life yeah. as goals. Yeah. You know what I mean? You take inspiration from certain things, but you, you can't just be like. You need to be the industry preacher. Like, you need to you need to preach over the end. You need to somehow. You know, Robbie and Devon got that Tuesday night. You just need to go in there and just start speaking. Oh, well. Because you're giving game. <laughs> But listen, um, I appreciate that you took the time to come and hang out with us. Yes, and Lord. Um, if you ever want to come back, if you, I mean, you got to start in Hollywood. So when you get the Oscar, just, you know, still be reachable. Okay. Um, Yeah. <laughs> and what get, are you even talking about right now? And get that Russian woman on claws. You're going to have to kill her because she's dangerous. Well, you know, there's only the season finale comes on Sunday. <laughs> and I'm going to do a, a, um, a takeover and I'll be live on the claws IG. Okay. And um, that one is, listen, you're going to have to make sure that wig glue down, honey, because that <laughs> edge is going to be snatched on that season finale. It is a nail biter for sure. Really? Good for man. sure. Okay, well, we're going to be watching and we're going to be posting. We'll post that on Hollywood. Like, you know, we stopped, we stopped promoting a lot of things um, on VH1 because, you know, we, we realized how much money we were saving them and not spending advertising. But we're going to post claws on the, on the uh Finale. That would make me happy. Okay. We love you. Well, we'll do it just because it make you happy. I love y'all back. I would appreciate that. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. For Don't be a stranger. <laughs> Don't want be a stranger. No, 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 no. We're not going to end the show like that. I like it. <laughs> thank you. I like it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate. You know that. they say they say if <clears throat> if you if your friend don't have a song to finish everything you say. Thank you. It ain't gonna work. I actually appreciate that, Miss Nash. <laughs> Where you from? <laughs> I'm from Gary, Indiana. You told me that a long time ago, didn't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He tells everybody. You remember that. me now. 
Michael mm. Jackson was his neighbor. He knows. He, yeah, we've heard the story. You know what? Tell him don't don't yuck your yum. Don't yuck uh, my yum. Look, look, look oh, there's shit. Elise Neal. She's next. Nice. <laughs> Elise, come here. <laughs> don't yuck come my here. yum. I love her too. Wait a minute. <laughs> Forty eight and fifty two. I mean, hug you, Sam. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Okay, so we still out. Look, we out. Peace. (laughs) And Tori Hart, let me tell you, this is why you gotta have friends, people in Hollywood, and and friends that are busy, but will make time for you. I called Tori probably an hour and a half ago. (laughs) She came all the way down from Vail. I was not in Vail. Okay. Talk about Bell Canyon, wait. Oh, but, no, I wasn't in Bell. I okay. wasn't in Bell Canyon. That's if I was if I was in Bell you Canyon, I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, I wouldn't have made it, Jason. Let me tell you something about Jason, okay? <laughs> he really is lucky that I love his ass. Because he just hit me knowing he needed me today. Needed okay? you. He yesterday. He know he needed me needed today. Needed you when you walked out of here yesterday. And instead of you just telling me that, now I'm in my, my daughter's clothes. Y'all see this? I'm actually wearing my daughter's clothes today because I didn't have any anything else. And I wasn't gonna wear my black dress again. But you look great. So, thank you. Where did you where the hell did you stay at? Oh, I stayed in, you know. I stayed where I recall, stayed. We was together last night. We well, all was together well, last night. All three night. of us were together. We all went to support Quay and Lala <laughs> and their viewing of the uh, Fear Factor, Celebrity Fear Factor on MTV. You know, I like them. They're good energy people. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go support them. You know, I thought yesterday, too, people like them are going to have a lot of people in their lives when they get older because they're likable. Me, I ain't got that many people. I, I'm planning a picnic, I think. Not a picnic, a barbecue for my birthday. So I'm wondering how many people will show up. I'm going to invite everybody. A lot of people's going to show up, Jason. <laughs> we shall see. But anyway, yeah, it was cool. But, you know, the thing that I, ha- I have a fear, I have a phobia about going to events like that me too be- because i don't know who's gonna be there and i know it's gonna be a motherfucker that i don't want to see obviously <laughs> last night I, was, I did not bump into anybody that i did not like i was happy about that i did oh who <laughs> you know i'm not gonna say his name because she don't deserve no acknowledgement but <laughs> what i will say is that how they do it what i will say is that <laughs> you know publicly he wants everybody to think he's straight but he'd be on them sex apps sending his dick and ass to people so i got all the receipts i'm just waiting for the bitch to come for me publicly and oh, i'm just gonna annihilate him but shit. he ain't gonna do that is he a name he's like a known he's name? a no name oh he's a no name mm-hmm. i think oh, i know well, what you're talking about there was another guy there that advertises with us a lot and i walked up to him i was like hey man you know you could really sing and he was looking at me like he was waiting for a punchline. I was like, nigga, that was a fucking compliment. <laughs> and I don't do that oh, often. Oh, you're talking about uh, Chris. Christian. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's talented. Yeah. Christian. Yeah, the boy's talented. But anyway, we had a good time. Tori did the, oh, she, you did what Joe Exclusive does. What? what I do? We sat here yesterday and all committed to showing up at a certain time. I text Tori 30 minutes before <laughs> I left my house. And I said, Tori, I'm leaving. She said, Okay, cool. Not a problem. I'm only seven minutes away. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm arriving at 6.52. That's eight minutes before we were all supposed to show up. You were already there. Uh-huh. I pull up in the car. I don't want to walk in by myself. So I text Tori and I call her. I said, so where are you at? She was like, oh, are you there? How is it? I'm not a promoter. Don't ask Just me how it is. Just bring your ass, girl. I did so bring wait, my no, ass. Wait, wait, here's the shade, how though. Is it? Here's the shade. You know what she said? Don't trip. I'm only seven minutes away. You've been seven minutes away for 30 minutes. No, but what I'm saying is, is I was literally seven minutes, like where I was at was seven minutes from the place. So that's why I said, you know, I really am just seven minutes away. And I just wanted to make sure you was really going. And Gio never answered any of the text messages. Right. So I didn't know who was there. He never does. My phone was charging. But you know, the thing that was funny is that Tori then, you know, she she can hear I'm like over it. Because I'm like, you know what? I don't want to walk in by myself. I We all said we was going to show up. So she's going to do the next nigga thing. Go. I'm already in the car. I don't hear I no wind. I was in the car. I don't hear no music. I don't hear no wind. Nick, I'm like, Nick is, is always in the car. Did I or did I not get there in seven minutes? You did get there in seven <laughs> okay, minutes. Okay, I told you I was seven minutes away. I don't lie. Okay, when I say I'm seven minutes away, I'm seven, seven minutes, minutes away. away. Well, I'm listen. not the type that be in the shower talking about I'm downstairs. Okay, I really be seven minutes away. I had a good time with you, man. I, I, you was, I was sitting in front of you. You was having a good old conversation with uh, Daphne Springs. Oh, that's my girl. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Y'all were talking about all all type of shit. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Well, you to. Giovanni was in the party sitting next to a midget. Yes, and he said he going to hit that. First of all, it's a little person. <laughs> Do not disrespect that community. I, well, for, I appreciate how much love you showed her because you definitely helped her hop up in the chair. But is that somebody that you slept with? Because I know you have this thing that you want to fuck a midget. First of all, I have not slept with her. She's a very good good friend of mine. She's thick, too. Thick as fuck. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind taking that down. Have you tried? Not yet. 
Are you going to? I don't know yet. Why? Because I want to, you know, sometimes I just want to be friends, man. Then if you accidentally end up in my, you know, sitting on my face, then that's different. So you would let the little person sit on your face? Absolutely. Little people need love, too. Well, when I shook her hand, it was so small. It reminded me of a toddler. I felt really uncomfortable. I feel really uncomfortable around small people. Why? Jason. <laughs> I don't know, and it's sad because I know, like, it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> but between us being there to watch Fear Factor and her being there, it was just too much. Well, it was she's coming on the show. Yeah, and she's going to have to sit in that chair for that show. She you can sit to... on my lap. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I love now, her. that's very disrespectful. I How mean, was that disrespectful? Because why do you, why you think she don't want her own seat? Like, I mean, she... I mean, we do have high chairs in the living, in the lobby. We are not going to disrespect <laughs> her like that. <laughs> no, she's, 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 she was a really nice girl. She has lots of followers. She's, 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 she's up there. Wait, he... <laughs> Giovanni was he sitting there. Wait, night. Giovanni was sitting there, and she's sitting there, and we're talking. And he goes, "Oh, you're really big on Instagram." I was like, "I can't, I can't." Which you told a little person she was big on Instagram. Gio, Jason Lee. I can't make this up. People that are listening, I'm oh, telling you right God. now, y'all <laughs> think that we just sit up here and create shit for comedy. Jason, you ain't worth the damn. When you told that little girl that she was big on woman. Instagram, and she was like, "Yeah," I, I was like, "Oh." Well, man. she used to be on Little People of uh, L.A. Mm. Little Women? Little Women of L.A. Excuse I ain't gonna me. lie. There was one girl from the Little Women of L.A. or Little Women of Atlanta, and she had gotten into a relationship with a nigga who wasn't shit, but he was fine. <laughs> and I was trying to find him. Oh, my God. Jesse. He was tall? Yes. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-uh. 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 Yeah, them standing next to each other just look really, like, pedophilic, or was that the right word? Or? <laughs> you sound like me right now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. She's a little, you know. I'm a t- she- I listen, if I do, I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tear her soul out of her body. You should record that and put it online. No, I can't do that. I wouldn't do that to her. <laughs> Just put a helmet on or a mask. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> well, so yesterday we dropped part one of the K. Michelle interview. I love K. Michelle. She came to my house and we did a really nice interview. And she, I had asked her beforehand, what can I ask you? And she said, you can ask me anything you want. So I started by digging in her relationships. And she, she revealed that um, Idris Elba can eat pussy really good. I heard some stories about Idris Elba. Did you hear his sex was whack? I heard he likes to spit on titties and slop it up. Like, <laughs> and slop it up. He's a nasty <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Who spits on titties and then slops it up? Like, that is just not cool. Maybe it's a British thing. He's British. I don't know what it is, but if you spit on my titties and slop it up, I'm not fucking Can you spit no on your more. own titties I, and you slop it up? I'm not spitting on my own titties and slop it up. I don't, no, I, you, I'm not spitting on my titties. <laughs> you ain't a freak. But okay, why why do you fine. need to be spat on? Spat or scat? <laughs> <laughs> why? Boobity. I like that shit. Spit on them titties. But what, is, but what does the spitting on them do? It's just something about it, man. If you're, no, so, no. That's what he no. did. That's oh, what no. I heard. So there was a guy that spent the night in my house and he kissed me and he spit in my mouth before oh, he kissed me. No. Nah. Like, Tori. No, it was like. I it was just, you gotta show us. No, it was just spit. It was just like saliva. It was disgusting. I like sucking on her tongue. I do not like to be spit on. I don't want to suck your spit. I'll kiss you, <laughs> and I love to kiss, but I do not want you to spit in my mouth. It was more spit. It was disgusting. I didn't talk to them again. <laughs> they left shit at my house. I just threw it out. That's gross. That's gross. That's spit. gross. See, that's what I'm saying. Something about this, just the spitting. Like, sometimes they, st- ugh. I was, ugh. Yeah. Depending on their like hygiene of their mouth, sometimes that shit stink. But you was just talking about what's but wrong spitting with on, spitting. spitting on the titties. Make up your mind. Spitting on the titties is different. It ain't different. I like to watch it, and I'm like doing. I like to watch her spit on her titties. Like damn. Okay, this, this conversation's going. Late. You know, I had a good night last night, boy. So I'm, I, my I, mind is still there. I already there. know. So another thing, K. Michelle talked about yesterday was <laughs> butt implants, and I didn't know what. I mean, I know what women go. You don't have any butt implants. All your shit's mm-hmm. natural, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, all 100. percent So she was talking about how there's this industry doctor who fills a lot of women's body up with the stuff that they get or whatever to get their butt big. And I thought I, all this time, I thought. There's some kind of incision. They put a plan in there or something or whatever. And I know about fat transfer and all that now. But first of all, I didn't know the butt injections were illegal in our country. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they're legal in other countries. But what they do is they go into a hotel room with this doctor with no. um, Well, they're not illegal anymore. What what do you call that? IV? No. Um, But what is it called? Uh, Oh. You know what I'm talking about. Anesthesia? No anesthesia. And they get this incision and then they literally just pump them with this saline this fluid not even saline i don't know what it is this fluid and it just goes all through their body 
And so that's how it's moving around and creating all these illnesses in women. So she had gotten really sick from what she said and ended up in the hospital. She's had all these blood transfusions and now she's had to get it all out. But now it's like in her body. So it's permanent. Yeah. So she's trying to get out as much as she can. She's talked about how really sick she's been and how it's been really difficult. But she also revealed how fake love and hip hop is. And she hates filming with these bitches because she said they showed up and they just I knew they weren't going to know how to handle her because when you look at the Atlanta cast, you got Stevie, Jocelyn, Mimi, you got uh, Dime Peace, Tommy. You got these big ass personalities who really don't give a fuck. Hollywood, these people are terrified of their images. And so they do everything to protect them. And K. Michelle showed up like, nah, fuck that. So she told everything in part one. Part two drops today. Oh, wow. okay. I want to watch part one and I want to watch part two today as well. Do you have the capacity to watch a full hour interview? Fuck you. Yes, have I you do. ever watched a full show of this show? I watch it. Motherfucker, I'm on the show. When niggas do that inflection in their voice, they I knew lie. You. No, that's not true. <laughs> I watched the show, Jason. Yes. What do you mean the capacity? Really? Yes. So Gio was introducing me to people at this party yesterday that I he knew I had no interest in knowing. I yeah. was like so over it. Well, and everybody, you know, every, I'm just a nice person, Jason. I think everybody has the right to be met by somebody. <laughs> introduced to somebody? Met or introduced to somebody. <laughs> so c continue on. Proceed. So uh, we ran into your friend that does the massages. Oh, my boy Seth, Hands of Fury. And we proceeded to tell him how we talked about you and him having... A bromance? Fellatio during Fortnite. Jesus Christ, Lord, bless this man. <laughs> so he proceeded to ask me to come on and give me a massage. I don't want no man rubbing me on camera. <laughs> Why? Jason, he did not ask you to because come on and do too, give you a massage. I don't want no I don't want nobody massaging me on camera. I just don't need it. It's just not necessary. He wanted I to come about, on and talk about his brand, not give you a massage. Right, but like I said, if you're gonna come in here and talk about massages, I need to know. Did you jack a dick off once when it got hard while you were massaging? If you didn't, then you ain't you ain't that nigga for me. <laughs> Nah, my, my guy was old and Filipino and blind, but. <laughs> <laughs> old Filipino and blind. Kate Michelle also revealed, um, you know, details of her relationship with R. Kelly. And in the interview, it was funny. She said, yeah, you know, once you get him, he just has a thing about him that he makes you, he just, he just keeps you and holds you. I said, sort of like them bitches in the basement. And she yeah. fell out laughing. But um, you had a dream about R. Kelly. I did. Did I he did. pee on you? He did not pee on me. It was the weirdest thing, but I was I thought I was going to die in my dream because I was like, I woke up like choking. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I did. And we were walking and it's, it's crazy. We were walking in like this dark dungeon area. In his basement? I, I don't think it was a basement. I don't know what it was. It, it looks like it could have been an old strip club that's no longer there or whatever. Okay. And we were just walking together. It was just the two of us. Mm. And then I just woke up and I started choking, but it was our cut and it... it I really was like, why am I dreaming about R. Kelly? Have you ever dreamed about and R. Kelly? I've never in my life dreamed about R. Kelly. And you weren't thinking about him yesterday? Nothing. Did you listen to his sell, music? Play, yeah, 12 play? No, 12 play. I didn't even have sex last night. It was nothing. It was M maybe, just... Maybe it was somebody... Maybe it was a girl in the basement channeling, channeling me. <laughs> I, it, it could be. Save me. No, I... I it might have been, because you know I do telep telepathy. Yeah. So I can, it could have been. I don't know. <laughs> but I woke up choking, and I hope nobody uh, shows up dead today. And there's a news report that somebody <laughs> he said died. it could have been a girl in the dungeon channel. Save, <laughs> save me, save me. Something. Save me. For real. I was good. No, because you know what's so crazy? I told the story on the show that I had a dream Takashi got killed, woke up that day, was tripping, and XXX got killed that day. See? Swear to God, I reached out to Takashi. You should reach out to R. Kelly. I'm like niggas, some... At how you got to hit K. Michelle? Did he have braids or did he have a do rag okay. on? <laughs> Actually, he just had his bald his uh, oh. bald head. Well, yeah. there's other news today, and I'm telling you, people, this is why I say you got to pay attention to details. R. Kelly's brother has dropped a tape, and he says that R. Kelly is fucking boys, and I don't know that it's true, oh. but "Trapped in the Closet" was one of his hits. In the closet. <laughs> that shit was genius. <laughs> he is not sleeping with no boys. And has STDs, reportedly. No, I can believe that. But he ain't sleeping with no boys. How do you think so? Because he's just not doing that. <laughs> no, he giving away some STDs. But I bet he ain't you. sleeping with no boys. I bet you to put a whole new twist on bump and grind. Oh, my God. <laughs> bump and grind. And grind. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just, okay, why not? I see you over there uh, while now helping you out. Hey, I got, I got them one-liners. You know, okay. pow, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> Why your gun sounded gay? Papa, <laughs> papa, papa. <laughs> it's so funny today. Speaking of papa, uh, papoose, <laughs> Remy, Remy DM'd me today and mm -hmm. said, 
that our followers are mean to her. And I just, it goes back to like this whole social media thing. Like how much power do we give over people, give people on social media? I mean, I don't know. Do haters, when they pop up on your timeline, do you say stuff back or just ignore them? It depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm feeling it, sometimes I might, you know, because most people, they don't expect that from me because I'm usually just easygoing and happy. Mm -hmm. So some days I just want to show them the North Philly side of Tori. I got to bring her out sometimes. (laughs) Don't let them forget. And just let them have it. Yeah. So did you know Amber Rose when you were in Philly? I did not. You didn't? Mm -mm. Mm Mm-mm. No. I kind of feel like, did you know Meek Mill? I did not. Mm Mm-mm. Okay, so Meek and Kevin... Because I moved out here a while ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, so... so Meek and Kevin are friends post you guys moving here to... Yeah. Okay, Mm -hmm. okay. So who are your celebrity friends that nobody knows about that you don't post about? Do you have any? Wow. Giovanni Um, Watson. Giovanni Watson. We're we're talking about real, like, notable celebrity. (laughs) (laughs) Soon to be. Well, you know, I don't really post Cedric. Um, Mm. I don't really post DL, uh, Niecy Nash. Mm. Some, some is, ball players. Is Cedric and, the entertainer funny privately? Uh huh. He's very funny, really? and he has amazing energy. Really, he's just a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time where I think he was going to come on the show or something. I don't know. We just haven't had him on here. We'd love to have him come on. Yeah. Ran into CeeLo last night at dinner too. Him That's and his random. wife. Have you met his wife? I I know his ex wife. <laughs> okay. I don't know his new wife. She's a stylist. She was fly. Yeah. I was like, damn, you giving Marjorie Harvey a run for her money. Mm. No, nobody's giving her a run for the No, money. well, she's spending all Steve. How's Steve how's CeeLo, how's he doing, man? He's doing good. He was on Wild and Out this season. We did a they did a whole tribute to Goody Mob. So oh, all yeah. of Goody Mob was there. I wow. didn't know one of the niggas from Goody Mob had one leg. Because you know, when I when I'm on stage, <laughs> I'd be looking for the like the craziest shit to say to somebody. I wasn't on that show, but I was sitting in the audience saying, Ooh, say something about his leg. Say something. And they didn't. What was it a fake leg or was it, was it like just a peg? Really? Yeah. He's a pirate? She look like a boy. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't say anything about his leg. I guess there's some things you're not supposed to say. They probably said, if anybody say one joke about my fucking leg, I'm shooting all mean, y'all. He got a peg. He could put a, <laughs> a pair of pants Did you know on one of the members from 3-6 Mafia has a... A, a arm. Has a, yeah, yeah, I've met him before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He also has an Oscar. I know, right? When them niggas won an Oscar, I was like, anything is possible. <laughs> you know, the I'll tell you a secret about Wild and Out people don't know is that um, Nick really does. Nick really is a good guy because he protects a lot of the rappers. Some of those people up there in the Wild Style, they can't freestyle. There's mm. rappers that cannot freestyle. And you be like, and it's real bad, too. Like how you got a record deal, my guy. Like Azalea Banks, when she came on the show and performed her little song, she looks so, she was so... She's just a pathetic piece of shit, you know? Oh, damn, <laughs> Jason, yeah. she's hurting. Tell us how you really feel. Well, you know, we had that whole online thing. You saw that. Yes. Did Y'all you had see, beef? Did you say what started it? I'll tell you what started because I have no problem living in my true. I'm minding my business. I'm on a date in Miami. And what well, a fine, fine motherfucker. But anyway, then I get a message from a fan, from a fan that DMs me uh, her, her Instagram story. And then uh, where she said, oh, I got my check from Wild and Out today, a whole $913. Woohoo. The next slide, she says, why don't we donate this to a fund to get Jason Lee a bypass, a gastric bypass? <laughs> so the fans are screenshotting that, sending it to me, right? So I'm sitting there at, you know, on South Beach and I'm looking at this. So I had time. For those of you listening, you can go to Alleged T on Instagram. They, they have it all up. So basically she said what she said. So the first thing I said was, Azalea Banks, you ugly piece of parvo infested dog shit. You don't want to start a fuck Instagram host, set up a one-on-one interview, bet out and unravel every piece of your worthless ass. That's how I started. Then uh, I said something else really inappropriate. I'm not going to read. Then I posted a photo of her. This photo right here of her, she don't have no edges. Oh, you know what's so crazy? I'm thinking this whole time Iggy, Iggy is <laughs> No, Azalea Banks. Azalea Banks. Know, you I saw just, this. I, I missed all of that, but it's... No, Azalea Banks. That's why I'm like, Iggy? Iggy. Yeah, nobody thinks of her. She's an afterthought in everything. But uh, So I said, I'd snatch your edges, but bitch, you ain't got none. Then I posted a picture of her GoFundMe account where uh, she had tried to raise $100,000 to defend herself against uh, Russell Crowe. He had spit on her. And I said, I got $1,000 to anyone who can spit on her and send me a photo. I mean, a video. And then I posted this photo of her. It's a photo of her crying. And I just said, if anybody wants to know what this cunt looked like on Wild and Out, here you go, you pussy ass. Then... I posted a picture of Remy, Cardi, Nikki, and Kim, and I just said, this is probably going to hurt, but somebody got to tell you you'll never be these girls. Even the voodoo you have can't get you number one hit. hit hang it up. Start flashing that EBT card because you ain't ever going to be a star, you whack-ass, un-American idol, dusty has trash can. Damn. <laughs> Damn. She Jason. ain't said nothing since. <clears throat> but, yeah, she, she was, had a good movie on Netflix, though. What was it called? Oh, fuck. 
It was with a uh, fuck. Yeah, that's what everybody does when they think of her career. Fuck her. <laughs> so I love animals. I'm a dog person, but I just met a point in my life where I'm just too selfish to have another living, breathing thing in my house. Yeah. I love dogs. So do you, or are you a dog, cat? Maybe. I have a dog, a cat, and a guinea pig. You have a cat right now. Mm-hmm. Ugh, cats. I'm disgusting. allergic to that and guinea pigs. Well, cats are the best. People, they, cats get bad raps. Cats are the shit. They are the most loyal animals, and they actually are very affectionate, too. You can't too. even really play with them. Yes, you can. My cat is the shit. Your cat ain't running around the house chasing you. Well, no. she does. She does. She she jumps on my curtains, and she does little <laughs> acrobats and, you know, tricks. and Because, you know, she's her and the dog compete for attention. So maybe when you have a dog and a cat, you know, they, they both are competing for my attention. So Once I turned gay, I got allergic to cats because I, <laughs> I used to have cats. So I don't fuck with cats. I used to mess with this girl. I used to go to her crib and this cat would just be looking at me crazy and then out of nowhere just jump on my leg. And like she, she probably sensed bad energy because you know cats like they know when somebody bad is around. I got great energy. Well, you might might not been for her owner. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no, I was just fucking her. I that's what I'm saying. She probably yeah. sensed that. Because mm-hmm. you know that's why the Egyptians put the cats in the tombs because they're there to protect and sense out all the, the bad energies. So Tori basically just said <laughs> even the cat knew you wasn't shit. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm that, just saying. The it's, cat it's since a, then has been put down because apparently she was doing that to a lot of people. How many bitches? How many niggas was this bitch fucking? So Gio, would you get a cat or a dog? I'm a dog person all day. Mm. I hate cats. I like kittens. But I don't fuck with cats. Mm. I love dogs. Mm. I used to have a, 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 a Savannah monitor. That's a reptile. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to have like, I love fish. I really love fish. How mm. can you love a fish? Like fish, aquariums. What I love about oh. fish is that you can actually just throw food in there and then they'll eat for a few days. You can leave and come back. They're still alive. But you can't talk to them. I mean, I'm a Pisces, so I am connected to the underworld do a little bit. Do you talk to your dog? I do. Like, I talk do to talk? my cat, my do you, dog. Do you talk to your dog about problems? Well, no, I don't talk to him about problems, but, you know, we do have conversations. About what? <laughs> well, conversation is two ways. So you, you're not having a conversation. Right. Well, actually, OK, more. Uh, but I, actually, I talk to my cat more because she actually does respond. <laughs> Believe it or not, my cat does respond. How? She goes. <laughs> I say stuff, and you know, like, Syl, did you miss me? She's like, yeah. And then she rubs up on me. And oh, that's just annoying. It's not. It's beautiful. Cats are the shit. When did you get this cat? Because you haven't you hadn't had this cat when you was at your old house. Heaven bought it home one day. And she, you know, basically, I came home from work and there was a cat there. And so, you know, she had called me and was like, Mom, I got this surprise for you. I got a surprise for you. And I was like, oh, okay, I can't wait. I was not expecting a cat. And so I got home and there's a cat in the house. And so I now have a cat. So recently there was a dog. There mm-hmm. was a story where a woman was hiking and she, she uh, ran into a dog who had been, who had, Fallen like 20 feet and hurt itself. Yeah. So she picked the dog up and put the dog on her back and carried the dog six more miles down the hill. And then when the family who the dog, the owners of the dog found found out about it, whatever, they gave the dog to the lady. <laughs> Did she, she want it? They didn't want that. She was looking for a dog. No, no. She <laughs> she was looking for a dog. She had said if, she, if, if it was meant for her to have a dog, it would fall in her lap. It fell in her lap. Oh. This is her, this is her telling the story, shit. you know. <clears throat> but could you have given your dog away to somebody like that? Because I feel like the dog I had before, I really loved my dog. Mm-hmm. They didn't want that damn dog. They was, they was trying. That's why the dog was up in the mountains somewhere. They let that dog go, okay? <laughs> they, they were trying to get rid of that dog. I will never forget. I had a dog as a kid, and my mom did that. She drove somewhere and put the dog out and just kept driving. Yeah. Isn't that fucked up? That's super fucked up. I mean, that's how you do it back in the day. Yeah, but with me in the car... <laughs> Like, couldn't you do it while I was at school and just be like, he ran away? Lassie ran away. Oh, my mom that's was a, a shame. goddamn savage. My mom wasn't shit. May she rest in 